I am going to be talking about the classic 80s movie references in Stranger Things. In particular, the E.T. references. This helps set the story up and makes the storytelling experience much easier to watch and enjoy. Due to the constant references used, it helps make the story more believable, particularly for audience members familiar with 80s horrors and thrillers such as E.T., Jaws and It. The references to existing films provide a sense of nostalgia which subconsciously makes the audience feel familiar with Stranger Things. So not too strange after all. And it does this by using subtle approaches which can often be overlooked by an average member of the audience. For example, a side-by-side -side comparison between the font of Stranger Things and the font of several Stephen King classic horror novels from the 80s, such as Misery. Subtly providing the traditional traits of classic 80s horror films and novels to Stranger Things. Now we're going to take a quick look at some references to E.T. Steve. I'm just trying to help yeah. you out, man. Don't be so cranky. Have sausage and pepperonis. There's a slice left if you want it. Sausage and pepperoni. The first and final shot of Stranger Things was purposely put in place for a specific reference to the E.T. film. The storytelling objective the Duffer Brothers are looking to achieve in this particular shot is not only a throwback to E.T. and a shout out to nostalgia, but to set the scene and create an atmosphere, and also to create the tone of the whole series. This show cleverly sets its references in place to make it easily watchable by relating it to existing films, whilst at the same time establishing a unique narrative strand. Setting Pam up in this particular style says a lot about her character. She resembles Steph from The Goonies, which, if you grew up watching, you know that she's a shy and reserved character. Now, cleverly, without watching The Goonies, it's easily shown through costume and personality that Pam is equal to Steph. Personally, I think the reason for Stranger Things being so popular amongst modern youth is not only the genius writing and directing, but the attention to detail and classic references the Duffer Brothers use to put into their storytelling. I will be focusing on the use of narrative special effects used throughout the series, looking particularly at the use of flashbacks. Flashbacks are now a common place within US drama and have proved extremely successful in regards to narrative structure with many shows successfully using them, including the hit TV series Lost. Looking at the flashbacks used within Stranger Things, they are used to illustrate the backstory of some characters, particularly Millie Bobby Brown's character Eleven and David Harbour's character Jim Hopper. These type of flashbacks are known as character origin flashbacks, which take the audience out of the present plot to shed light on events that occurred previous. In the second episode of the series, we see Eleven reluctantly entering Mike's closet. This is the first flashback used to give depth into the character's background and shows the audience why she was reluctant to enter the closet, as at this stage we know little about the character. In regard to Eleven's story, the audience only find out small parts from her past during flashbacks throughout the entire season. The approach to Chief Hopper's story is somewhat different. The audience are made aware in the first episode his daughter sadly passed away, but it isn't until a series of flashbacks in the last episode of the season that the audience finally find out what happened, leaving the audience engaged throughout the entire season. It can be said that audience can engage and enjoy intricate storytelling as they enjoy trying to figure out the plot rather than just watching it unravel. Jason Mittel states, not to downplay the importance of traditional pleasures of character depth, but the use of narrative complexity adds operational pleasures of formal engagement, meaning that a level of attention is needed to follow such storylines, and the use of flashbacks is an innovative way to keep the audience engaged throughout the entire series, just like it does in Stranger Things. 11. She's one of the main characters in the hit Netflix original series, Stranger Things. She's a 12-year-old girl that has spent her childhood being experimented on. I'm going to talk about the visual representation of Eleven's personality throughout this series. So let's begin. The reason I've chosen Eleven is because of her lack of lines throughout the eight episodes. Her facial expressions in the first episodes are bland yet intriguing. I know this is contradicting, but let me explain. In the opening scenes, Eleven has run away from an unknown location. She finds herself in a local diner where she stumbles across some food. 
She is dressed in a hospital gown with no shoes and what feels like a natural expression of feeling lost. It comes across that everything is new to her, like she has seen everything for the first time. She finds Kelly fries on the counter and the reaction on her face and in her actions gives us the impression that she's incredibly hungry and has never tasted anything quite as good before. This sets the first characteristics of her personality, which is intriguing. You can see through her minor movements that she isn't scared to try new things or take risks. Later in the series, a group of boys bond with Eleven. She takes it upon herself to protect them from a group of bullies. This is showing her significant actions that define her personality. This portrays that she is loyal and heroic, characteristics that everyone looks for in a friend. Now, her styling for the character wasn't anything special. You can't identify any of the clothing choices she has had were her own. First, it was the fetching hospital gown and then the pretty pink dress, which was also given to her. The one accessory she loved, though, was a blonde wig. When she saw it, she brightened up inside. She thought she was pretty and that nothing could make her look better than this wig. This was till she ran away and got it dirty, except she didn't let it bring her down. She got up and found this new confidence that none of us had ever seen before. She turned into a badass that didn't care what people thought about the way she walked or the fact she didn't have lovely wavy locks to play around with. She was 11.